I want to bring in Michael Pettis. He's the finance professor at Beijing University and also associate at the Carnegie Endowment. He says that China is risking a trade war if it doesn't revalue its currency. Uh, joining us from our Beijing bureau, Michael, uh, great to have you with us to shed some light on this. Do you really believe that if China doesn't revalue the yuan, appreciate it, that there really is going to be a full-blown trade war? Well, it, I, I wouldn't say trade war. I would say significant increase in trade tensions. The problem is that already there is a conflict. The U.S. wants an adjustment of its trade deficit much more quickly than, than, than China can afford to adjust. It would need to raise interest rates and raise the uh, value of the currency over the next six, seven, eight years in order to adjust. Mm -hmm. uh, the U.S. probably wants an adjustment much more rapid than that. But the, the problems in Europe have made everything much worse because in Europe, the trade deficit countries are now finding it very difficult to finance themselves. Right. And if they can't finance themselves, they can't run trade deficits. So, uh, then so we may see a very rapid adjustment in Europe. Well, given that then, Michael, doesn't it give the Chinese a stronger position to wait on revaluing the UN because of what's happened in Europe? Yes, you could look at it that way and you can say because of the European problems, we're already suffering quite a bit and we need to slow down our adjustment. But adjustment is going to take place. It's going to take place either in the trade surplus countries like China and Japan or it's going to take place in the trade deficit countries. And my worry is that if there isn't enough of an adjustment here, then we're going to see the U.S. trade deficit grow quite quickly to make up for the, uh, for the contraction in the trade deficits of the European countries. Mm -hmm. And I just don't think that that is, given high unemployment, that that is a very, uh, uh, um, that that's not going to be a pretty volatile combination. No, I, I can imagine that, Michael. But, you know, I've often wondered this. Let's say that the tensions between U.S. and China grow so much uh, that uh, the U.S. is not able, you know, there is essentially a full-blown, uh, if not trade war, at least uh, higher trade tensions between the two. Uh, given what's happened with this economic crisis over the last uh, two years or so, uh, who really hurt, gets hurt more in, this, uh, in, in, in rising tensions? Is it the U.S. or is it China? Well, I, I, I think the issue is not who, get, who gets hurt more. I think everybody gets hurt, but historically it's been pretty clear. Um, during a period of global trade contraction, it's the surplus countries, for example, the United States in 1930 or Japan in 1990, that get hurt the most. But the issue of who gets hurt the most is probably less important. The fact is that if we resolve these international imbalances via bigger than neighbor policies and via trade tensions, then the cost is going to be much higher and it's going to be shared out across the globe. Okay. All right, Michael, thanks so much for joining us and, again, shedding some light on the situation between U.S. and China. Michael Pettis of Peking University and also the Carnegie Endowment.